Hello and welcome everybody to the 39th Table Turf Battle Open. My name is Malib and I will be your commentator, your entertainer, your hostess, streamer, whatever you want to call me. You could call me a squirrel, but the important thing is I am here to show off, to stream, and to help you all enjoy some awesome table turf action. Coming up right away, we already have a pretty exciting match between Zeb and AJ. Uh, two, two phenomenal players, very good, very, very, very good. We've seen a lot of them over the many, many months. I'm still very slow at getting properly getting familiarized with everybody. I've got certain people, like I've got Jack Shaney, I've got Yovin, I've got their history done. I'm figuring out some of these others, but this is the best way to get to know and familiarize myself further. So we are going to be getting set up with AJ and Zeb for their first game, which we're diving straight into as we do some wild drifting in a river drift. Coming in from AJ's perspective, she looks like she's got two cards. Two cards that are good. <laughs> we got a couple of really light, dangerously light cards. But they're still top decking. They're still gnarly adding that could be drawn. Looks like we're going to go straight for the Gnarly Eddy. Cover a lot of ground. Can get trumped, but at this range, I think the pierce can happen. Yeah, and that's going to be what happens here. And yeah, we're rushing to try to compete, try to block it out, because I can imagine there's a, another pierce or another push that could very easily happen. And. Looking at what AJ has, she's kind of lacking in anything that can really push the offense. Really solid deck overall. I see it. I don't really see the combos. Okay, it looks like Zeb's gonna go for the defense here. And we're kind of just setting the stage for the rest of the game. Uh, there's potentially cards that could break through this, but. It's not anything too strong. Good placement of the Steel Eel here, as that's going to mean that AJ has a very strong chance to have something to pressure during the late game. Uh, speaking as somebody who has started to play a little bit more to- Ooh! Nice catch! Speaking as somebody who has started to play just a little bit more table turf, it is- very easy to forget the importance of setting up a special block in a position that allows you to pressure your foes. It is so easy to forget about that because you just get tunneled in on setting up a combo, setting up on like building up those special blocks so that you can use them like immediately or you have all of them at the end. But what does that do when it costs half of the special just to like start tapping into your enemy's territory. And you can't, and then you can't even follow up with that. So you just used up all of the space just doing like a couple of specials. I feel like this is a really early tent attack. Granted, looking at the cards that we have available, that's. Kind of, it's not too wild of a thing. I respect this idea too. Could go for the Tentatech special game. But just setting up a little bit more to make sure that that is in a better position. And potentially utilizing it to break in. Do some interruption of base building is entirely not a bad idea. Especially when you have a near perfect... Uh, splatter screen this early in. 
That's... I... Well, I guess that means that you're not really interrupting too much base building if it's that perfect. It might, it might, it might. Is actually, that is actually a good question of, do you want a perfect uh, base building combo there? Or overwrite, because yeah, we've got a 22 point lead, but all that Zeb has to do is just play his splatter color screen and he gets those 24 points back. AJ looking for a spot to put that Golden Marie. I can imagine he's wanting to try to push soon. We are going to see the ink that coming out. And that is going to be a perfect overlap later for AJ. So, eye for an eye, as they might say. I'm sure this perfect splatter screen counter is coming up down the road. But we've got a perfect uh, ink back just around the corner so both are actually about even on the score <laughs> trying to fish up any way to gain points i think yeah that one over there is probably your best bet You're not going to get too many points but it sets you up for the three pointer and setting up like that is better than nothing granted that is a good point you don't get the spec the 312 perfect recovery 24 set up we have a 39 point lead a perfect splatter screen is not going to be enough in this situation and aj is going to be able to claim the first point in a very quick very exciting very active first game 15 point difference Yeah, I, I need to see these players more. Granted, it's a little harder when I'm not streaming everything that happens in table turf. Uh, it's also difficult. When I see so much Jack Shaney and so much Yovan, I'm not complaining. I enjoy them. I see a little bit of these other players, but I need to start making a little bit more of a conscious effort. To really getting to know them. And more specifically, their play styles. But really solid first game that I was a little worried about that splatter screen coming out so early, but it absolutely paid off. As those two specials were basically 24 points each. I'm pretty sure that was closer to like a 45 point gain from specials, which absolutely remarkable for a first game. Con continue this flow. We have a much less favorable opening hand having to play in the splatter screen so early, but it means there's a really solid chance that it's not gonna get countered out in the future at least. Really aggressive push it with the steel eel to break in. And just continuing with this rush through with the splat charger. I can, I kind of expect Zeb to be concerned about his own base. And there, there's a good degree of him wanting to try to protect it. But it might also be a conversation of it being better just to push. You just recognize that your opponent is going to try to run ahead and you just need to do the same. I think that Ouroboros somehow is supposed to fit in the enemy camp. Might be good just to drop the gnarly editing in base and get that special. As that's going to quickly be running out of space. It's like we are choosing to continue onward with the push. A weak little jug, we get the special, but that might be the huge that might be a potential tempo window that 
uh, AJ would be hoping for as she's going to be able to continue further onwards with either invading or she might be able to section off some base while Zeb's kind of just through and gone with his. Which if she's able to do that, that would be a huge advantage. That's absolutely not defending if Zeb is making any kind of push. And push he does. Both bases are thoroughly wrecked. Ouroboros is down. And we're trying to find somewhere to put this. That only goes in Zeb's base at this point. And so she shall drop it there. Five turns, six turns left in the game, and this is one of those games where all the Turpas have been completely annihilated. No synergy, no planning, head, head full of thoughts, brain empty, kill everything. As we quickly make our way towards the final four turns. Nice position with that Tent Attack. Both players now at four special. 11 point difference is not good. I like this deck that AJ has. She has a pretty deck. But this is not necessarily the greatest position for her to be in. Chooses ultimately to pass. Same goes with Zeb though. In this position, I'm pretty sure Zeb's a little more comfy with the notion of having to pass because he at the very least is going to be in a point lead. I kind of like that Marigold. I kind of want to see some base like special combo setups. I know they're not going to be easy to do. Might be worth trying to look around and find though. Granted, I'm a very greedy player. I, I want to I wanna be able to have these super gnarly chains at the end. I think Zeb sees something. No, it looks like he is only looking for a single 312, banking on a single piece for this next turn. While AJ is going to go for the Marigold, get so many points off of this. Keep up with the 312 position. Huge tempo swing. Is that going to be enough? It is a one point lead. Both of them are going for the Ink Fat. Oh, wait. Oh, no. There was an Ink Fat played so much earlier. And she's going to be able to get the perfect one. There's no way for Zeb to turn this around. And AJ will be able to claim a second point as both of them manage to secure the perfect positions. <laughs> I didn't even realize that Zeb had set himself up to be able to claim the perfect spot for the splatter color as well. That is, that is some big brain plays right there. That is big brain from both players. That Marigold saved that run. Literally setting her up with a one point lead. And it looks like our next game might be the last, might not be. Ah, fits so nicely. I need to make a, a thicket deck because the the stage is wild. It hurts my brain. But play cards like that make it make everything feel better. Make everything okay. You get you get something like uh, a stringer like that, and you're reminded that everything is going to be okay. As you get to play your 11 piece card and get your special free of charge. Nice block as well. Meaning that this is going to quickly turn into a panic rush now as Zeb needs to pull out the defense. And AJ, <laughs> she said, please! <laughs> I, 
I feel like drop just dropping the bucket. I kind of like the idea of just dropping the bucket or the end parry. It might not work, but it also might. It's entirely possible that it could go either way to pay on what read situation Zeb is going for. And I think this works out. The charger can now fit. Yeah, there you go. That's a smart cookie. Zeb being like, what do I do now? And the answer is lose. I'm, I'm speaking with a little more tongue-in-cheek in my commentary today, a little bit less of professionalism. I do apologize. If you're not enjoying it, please let me know and I can tone it down a bit. But that is a very, very scary place to be. Oh, just be like, please, big man, fit in with the big man. We need some big man, big man. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop. I'm sorry, chat. I'm sorry, my beautiful viewers watching this fantastic tournament. I am sorry. I'm desecrating these grounds. <laughs> but with the big man blocking off that uh, splat charger, not really much else space to go. Can't really. In Actually, I wonder if the end parry can break in. No, it doesn't look like it. So this is definitely the wisest of plays. Just starting to build up points now. Zeb has pretty much ran out of base to be able to build with. I can respect that tri streamer, but we got we got a good spot right there. You, you might as well just take it. You still need three special to be able to make anything work, but ooh. We have a Pierce. We've got some damage going on the turf. More game is to be had. Things are not over yet. Though Zeb had to make a very expensive move. Just to get one more action in. Good news for Zeb. He managed to secure some points. Bad news? I don't think he interrupted anything. Yeah, there's nothing left in AJ's deck that she could really use in that spot, to my knowledge. So we're gonna put a cheeky tentatech, just looking to interrupt the gnarly Eddie, and manages to succeed in doing so. Just a cheeky little play right there. Maybe gnarly Eddie would have fit? Final turns left, we have the other charger. I kind of want to just nap this deck. This deck looks fun. I'm just, there we go. I'm just, you didn't see anything, chat. Nobody saw anything. Nothing happened there. You didn't see anything, right? I can't, I can't, I don't even have the cards to make this deck, so it doesn't matter. Going to go for the crab tank. Can't. Not feeling comfortable trying to find a position to drop a 312 and get some kind of chain. Kind of just in a mental state where she's thinking, I'm gonna need to pass anyway, so I might as well just play something that gets as much value as possible and then play a 312 on the final turn. We respect those plays, we respect those strategies. Especially when you have a 15 point lead like this, uh, it is entirely possible that AJ is going to take a very confident first win. As she sweeps Zeb down, poor man has been walled out. He does have five special. I am suspecting that he is looking to play a three, get one special off and then double it. That is what we are going for here. We get some specials. That is not enough to set the lead, but that might be enough to take the win if AJ cannot find an optimal location to place this screen. There's a lot of options. 
But which one is the right option? And I'm not, I don't despise that one. That's a 19 point lead, which means that Zeb would need, like, has, like, needs to find a very close to perfect uh, 312. 15 seconds left on the clock. It's, I question if AJ would be able to find the time to find something better. We've had 10 seconds. She is looking desperately, but is going to ultimately settle with this. As the Zipcaster rushes in, that's going to be a lot of turf. That might actually be enough. That might be enough for Zeb. And it is by a single point. This match is not over. These two are going neck to neck. Zeb, literally a hair, a hair of points, manages to cut his way in. AJ needed to just spend a little bit more time. If she just got one more point, that would have at least been a draw, which is not great. You don't want to draw either, but at the very least, Zeb doesn't get a point that way. This is not over. This is far from over now. Zeb might have his tempo. He might have the momentum he needs to turn things around. But it's entirely possible that AJ just rocks things out one more time. And gets the 3-1. Where are we going next? Where are we dancing? Looks like we're going to the squared squared. We're doing some square dancing here. As these table turf gamers. Ooh, that's a pretty tasty hand. I don't like the inkjet being here this early, but I mean, you've got three plays otherwise. Ouroboros beating down Pearl. <laughs> you see, Pearl's very tough. She's big and strong. But because of how big and powerful she is, uh, that means that everything else beats her. Oh god, I just realized how hilarious of a concept that is. Oh, I want to think about it that way now. It's like... Character versus character, who wins? Like, you... So, the logistics here is, like, overwrites canon will happen. But, like... Optimal set... Optimal situations... Who is actually worth more? Like, yes, little Judd overwrites, like, most of the relevant meta cards. But when the day is done and the deed is made, when little Judd overwrites as much as possible, is he gaining more points than the other card, or is the other card still gaining more? That's what I'm talking about. So, like, if little Judd gets nine points and then pearl only got like ouroboros got eight points then little judd is stronger than ouroboros but if ouroboros still there's no way little judd can take more than like have ouroboros go less than 10 points then the ouroboros is stronger than little judd that's how we have to do our power scaling like here, Tentabrella is stronger than Gnarly Eddie. Because it was able to secure so many points off of him. Setting up a Charger. I love this card. It is so flexible. It does. It has so much reach and so much weight to it. It's managed good. It's gonna be able to manage to break through, sneak past the order duelies. And that is gonna be just enough space to be able to get the reflux out. Gets a special as well while making making it not necessarily easy for Zeb to get his specials. This does leave space for a curling bomb. That would be really beneficial if Zeb possibly has it. I would have probably liked the other way. This does get that special. Okay, I take that back. We're looking, AJ's looking at different things than I am. I'm thinking, what if he's got a curling bomb? If he's got a curling bomb, that's three special that are just set up right there. 
But this way, AJ is setting herself up to be able to get the two special off of this. So she's kind of got three as well. Or otherwise, she would have probably only got one. This late in passing the gnarly Eddie tent attack versus a pass, you're not getting too much. But you got two special versus that one. You got that two little bit of points. We've seen plenty enough times how close these games are getting. Every single point matters. Getting a solid tent attack like that is bravely important. And I don't think Zeb has a curling bomb. I personally like the curling bomb, so if I was Zeb, I would have one in my deck. But, yeah, no, that curling bomb spot is just messing with me. Gets a nice two special, balances out the score a little bit. Three turns left on the marker. There's actually a cup. There's one spot that, two spots that do guarantee a special. Or we can go for the special usage, make that a six, seven point play for free, which is huge. This is a pretty strong play as well, but that seems like something you'd want to do on the last turn. Not going to be nearly as rewarding as that position, but we still respect that. That is a five point uh, stamper. We're gonna go for this right now, get that less special. But this means that Zeb has the opportunity to get a perfect splatter color screen on the next turn. If he is passing here, it's gonna be all in on this inkjet. No, we got a crab. Does she have the lead? She's got the lead by five points. We're back in this situation. She needs the best ink jet possible. I think that's pretty darn close. Wait, Zeb, Zeb miscalculated. He didn't have enough special. He didn't have enough special. He did the maths bad. Bad math. Bad math 